Sooner Nation. Welcome back to the Sooner Surge softball edition with a little instant reaction from game one of the OU versus Texas series. OU takes game one, five to two, uh, and Maxwell pitches really, 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 really good for six innings. And then the seventh uh, has a little bit of a struggle there, but gets out of it. Uh, overall, a victory for Oklahoma. Uh, not really the pitching duel we thought. I, uh, they did not throw their ace in game one there, Hunter. So, uh, first off, just kind of your opening thoughts from the game, Hunter. Yeah, I'm shocked by that. Uh, I really thought uh, Tegan Kavan was going to go tonight. Did not. Mac Morgan got the start, and the Sooners really did well off of her. Uh, she had four in the third innings. Uh, allowing seven hits, five runs, and walked three batters. Uh, Sooners did not strike out at all against her. So, uh, yeah, shocked by that decision by Mike White. Uh, but I guess it is a series in which uh, kind of just expect the unexpected, I would say, uh, from uh, uh, personnel decisions, really from both sides. Uh, no Alina Torres tonight for the Sooners. Yeah, and uh... – couple of things stand out. First, Maxwell, unhittable, basically, first five innings, had the no-hitter broken up there in the fifth, I believe. Uh, and then Jada Coleman continues to dominate for Oklahoma. Four RBIs, four of the five RBIs from her, uh, which is outstanding. And then you look at the seven, eight, and nine hitters, Hunter, they scored four of the five runs. So a lot of the pop, a lot of the uh, uh, kind of getting things going was from the bottom of the lineup. Um, so... Really good Boone again. Uh, Sydney Sanders a couple walks tonight. Uh, they 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 were still pretty patient at the plate. I thought Oklahoma was, but Jada Coleman hit a bomb uh, there to really really break the game open. It was two nothing. She hits the three run bomb, and I'm thinking, well, that pretty much does it. Uh, so Kelly Maxwell though, really good pitching, ten strikeouts. I think matches her season high. Uh, really good performance by her. And uh, that's about all you can say. Maxwell and Coleman were kind of the two that kind of, to me, stood out as uh, kind of MVPs of the game today, Hunter. Yeah, Jada Coleman put the Sooners on the board in the third, uh, following just uh, another wild scenario. I know a lot of people have been upset with reviews, you being one of them. Uh, Kenzie Hansen took off early on an RBI uh, single from Riley Boone, and the run comes off the board. Hansen is out. And Boone is back into the batter's box. So, very weird uh, situation. That's a mistake you cannot be making. I mean, the rules are you cannot take off before the pitch. You, you can't be pushing it because now you can really challenge it at any given point. It seems like every game there's at least one challenge on a runner leaving early. Hunter, I, I honestly think there are coaches on the sideline. That that's all they do is watch to see if runners leave early. I, I don't even think they have to watch. I think yeah, but I think they do. That's that's yeah. They look at it. I think there, there's watching. probably a manager that's assigned to uh, watch something like and, that. But I mean, you can really challenge it at any given time. It seems like there's never. I've never seen at least a uh, uh, umpire in which they said we're not going to review this. Uh, we'll go take well, a look at it. Well, what's going to happen when a runner leaves early on a home run and the, the the run doesn't even like it doesn't even matter. There's no play on it or anything, and they're going to get called out. And it's 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 sad, but it is the rule. So if it's the rule and you know they're watching it that closely, you can't do it. You can't do it because they are watching it like a hawk. So you got to stay out of that situation. Uh, it was nice to have Kenzie Hansen back for sure. Uh, and then defensively, we talked about it before the game, Texas. How many errors they have this year? A couple more tonight. And they only really, got counted in the stat book. I thought uh, it would that, be because yeah. they got the out at second, but that's yeah. But I'm sorry, when a when the outfielder and infielder collide and drop the ball, that's an error. Mark yeah. it as an error scorekeeper. That's ridiculous. But anyway, they, they get out of it with just the one error. But and then on OU side, man, Tiari Jennings tonight. Unbelievable. Two ricochet outs that she gets. And also on both those outs, I don't want to kind of leave this as not talked about. Sydney Sanders at first, her stretch, uh, without it, both those both those ladies are not out. So uh, kudos to Sydney Sanders too for the the magnificent stretch 
and getting the outs. But T.R. Jennings, and, and how about clutch on that last one? You talk about game on the line, Hunter. I mean, if that if if uh, she gets on base, I mean, the winning run is up to bat. So uh, really good performance from T.R. I thought at shortstop. Yeah, uh, defensively, the Sooners played really well. T.R.A. at shortstop, you mentioned it, Sidney Sanders at first. Uh, so really good defensive performance for against a team that they can run the bases. You have to be on your A game. There were some that were, I mean, T.R.A. had to make those big-time plays to get the out at first. Uh, not easy when the runner's making it that tough. Now, this is the second straight game for Kelly Maxwell in which she started off great, tons of strikeouts, no hits. Then the seventh inning comes around. What are your thoughts on that, Jay? I have a couple thoughts. One thought is she started going to the changeup a little bit more. And let me, I don't know how to say this really, but I think personally, I think when it's a little more pressure situation, like she, she was just blowing stuff by him early on. Okay. And then the, she was really trying to paint corners, really like really trying to be careful. I think pitching to them near there near the end, and it was coming to bite her a little bit. She had a, the base on balls, and then I, I just think maybe maybe the pressure, Hunter. Of okay, I'm about got this closed out. Now I got to get the final two, three outs, whatever it is. I just think maybe, and you could t- see Rocha going out there, and then Rocha at the end is like really giving her, you know, kudos, kind of like, hey, you, you fought through it. And that's what that's what you need to do. I, I think that's more event hunter. And they talked about it a little bit in the game. By the way, kudos, the announcing crew. It, it felt like the women's college world series. Beth Moen, Jessica Mendoza, Michelle. You can't beat that crew. Best in the business. Loved it. And they had some great insight in the game. But I, I th- one of them was talking about how at Oklahoma she's had to like kind of her personality is now you're the ace, but you're the ace at Oklahoma. Like. It's a big deal, and OU Texas is a big deal. And I think you pitch great, Hunter, and then you have three more outs to get, and it's like, here we go. You know what I mean? So I think that's all it was. I think she pitched great, man. Yeah, I I think Kelly Maxwell, I'm really impressed with that type of performance in a rivalry game. I mean, that's you're going against number four team. RPI-wise, they're number two in the country in Texas. You can't really replicate a game yeah. like that, especially with how good Texas is. Uh, I mean, I think it's fair to say this is the best team Oklahoma has played all year to this point. And for her to go out there, I mean, she had a no hitter through into the fifth inning, 10 strikeouts, shut out into the seventh inning. So uh, through six innings there, uh, really for, and it being a road game, uh, not a neutral yeah. game. Like uh, you get in football, it's a true road game in a rivalry setting, uh, teams that have bad blood. It's impressive what she was able to do. Now, with that said, seventh inning, I would like to see with how – I mean, Monticelli used to be a starting pitcher. She has not started at OU. Carly Keeney, starter, very rarely starts at OU. Same thing with S.J. Garrett. She could go the distance if needed to, just hasn't needed to any of those three pitchers to be the – starter to where they're going four or five six innings they're only going a few innings at a time I would like to see seventh inning maybe it's now two games where Kelly Maxwell gets to the seventh and then it kind of um getting out of the game is a little difficult maybe start having someone warmed up in the pen not to necessarily pull Maxwell but just take that pressure off of her of okay if this does really get bad like you're not going to be the reason they lose this game. Like the Oklahoma loses because Maxwell just unable to get out of it at the end. Uh, if that were to be the case, I feel like maybe if knowing someone is in the pen kind of would uh, alleviate some of that pressure. Well, I, I think two things. I think first off Maxwell, her, she had a really good late movement on her pitches. And I think it's just like, just trust it. I mean, you got great movement on it. Uh, get, get in there and, get out of it. But I think the problem with, with putting someone in as Hunter is I think she had went six innings and they thought, well, let's, she's just going to go in there and close it out. And then I think once they're got runners on and tough situation, it's like, you don't really want to bring in Keeney or Monticelli there in a long ball. And it's here you are tied. So I think they were like, and I also think they were like Kelly Maxwell, 
I want this is for your benefit too to get out of this. Like I, I think it's a growth. Like hey, for her, it's going to be a big thing for her to say, hey, finish it off strong, got the win. So I I, I don't know. It's a little bit of both probably. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting uh, situation there. Like what is the right move? Because yeah. I mean it's tough to go through the order again in the seventh. Uh, yeah. Now the what third time, fourth yeah. time. Uh, through for them, like they're they're gonna start catching on, especially when the pitcher's getting tired, uh, getting up to a hundred pitches or so. So, but most importantly, the Sooners get the job done. Jada Coleman, four RBIs, the home run in the fifth, and uh, I mean it ended up being the game winner because before that it was two nothing, and uh, Estelle Check comes in and shuts down the Sooners, doesn't allow a hit through the final uh, two and a. Uh, Two thirds innings for the long course. Yeah, yeah, I know you. First time in a while, just one home run tonight for Oklahoma, but they get the win, five to two. First of three. Hopefully, a sweep for Oklahoma. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for being subscribed to the channel. If you are not, click the button, subscribe, join up, uh, be a part of it. We have content following every game, so please be a part of it. Also, check out the Fan Stop Fan Stop dot com. You can see the shirt I'm wearing, Boomer. Uh, great shirt of the month club. Use ten percent off. You use code surge, you'll get 10% off uh, your first three months. Check it out. We'll be back tomorrow. Game two tomorrow night, 7 p.m. ESPN. Uh, can't wait. Gonna be another great game. Talk to you tomorrow. Boomer.